Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. In the spirit of all my last few videos, something else is broken. So today we're going to be replacing a pump for my water chain system for my display tank. And looking at a few other tweaks that I need to make for it. So we'll take you out and we'll show you. So this is my display tank, obviously. You've seen that before if you've been here before. If you haven't, welcome. And remember to click that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. So to give you a bit of an overview to start so we've got the display tank over here this is my living room and then here we've got a little balcony out into the back garden and on the balcony i have this little garden storage box and inside the box we have another box so a box full of water i've got my hma filter here and that's fed from an outside tap down there which runs up that drain pipe, inside that pipe, and then comes out of this pipe here. And when I'm draining the tank, I take it from the tank in there, run a hose, start a siphon into that one there, which goes down into that water butt. And I can use it to water the garden or whatever. Ignore the dog poo there, I need to clean that up. Uh, or just drains away. And then when it's filling, I have an HMA system here as well, but I've also got an RO unit on top of it. And I don't need that anymore, because I don't have a saltwater tank up here and I don't use RO for anything else. So today's job is going to be change that, take off the RO unit, just make it a plain old HMA. And then this pump here, inside the water storage, has failed. It's just kaput, no longer working. So I need to swap that out for the new one that I've bought. So also in here, when the water comes out of the HMA, it goes into here. I've got a little float valve. So as when I take water out to refill, it automatically refills this storage area. Heats the water with the water. Air stone to keep the water moving. And then a pump to pump it back into the tank. So first we shall do this. Just get rid of this unit. That should be a quick enough job. Let's go on with that. So first things first, we'll make sure the water's off, which it is. And then, literally, the way this works is pre-filter, two carbon block filters. That thing goes into an RO unit, so this has got the RO membrane in it. All I need to do is disconnect this. These are all your quick-release fittings. It says taking So that's that disconnected. I want to connect it in to this line here. I just need to push these down and it should pop out. Which isn't happening. So when the quick release fittings fail, you go and get the Aquarium Adventures quicker release system. Easy as pie. Push that in firmly. And then put the little tab back in. Make sure it sticks. Easy as that. So now I have the HMA filter in there, one line feeding the main storage bit and the other line is just a fill line that I can drag into any of the tanks up here if I want to chop up something randomly. Next, let's change this pump out. That was easy enough, I'll just take it apart and we'll add in the new one, whatever it is. So I went with this good old Sun Sun cheap replacement filter. Um, it's not as powerful as the one I'm replacing. And this is a three and a half thousand liter per hour pump. This is a two and a half thousand, but it's plenty enough for what I need it for. Instructions. Pump and foreign fitting. So I need an adapter. Comes with a bunch of adapters for the hose end. It's quite a neat little one. I picked this one because it takes its input from the bottom 
rather than the side which the other one did so I should get more water out of this when I'm doing it. So that should just be a case of finding the right fitting for this to connect to this hose. Which is probably this one. I'll uh, probably need my quick release system on this hose as well. Look at it. No, I need to find an even quicker release than these. Bear with me. So, this should work even faster. I wish I could give you a link to this stuff because it's very really tough. Must be an easier way to cut this. Too small. Too small. Just about right. So that's just right, but I can't fit the tightening nut over it, so I'll have to use it with just this. But right now, if I just jam it in, there we go. That should be plenty strong enough. And then this bit of threads in here. There we go. Now obviously, this box is insulated because it gets quite cold around here. So in theory, that's done. All I need to do is find an adapter for this to be able to plug it in to the power supply. So found an adapter. And plug that into this. And I'm also going to use one of these. This is a smart enabled plug. So plug that into that. I'll show you why in a minute. And then that should go into this. So if I plug that in now, water should come pouring out. Which it does. So that is it in essence. Um, one thing I do like to do is, obviously this is electricity, next to it a load of water. Um, so there is every chance that we could get some kind of leak, spray, whatever it might be, so I like to take a tub, be an old ice cream tub or whatever it is, and just put the plugs inside that, and then put a lid on top of that. So I've got a lid here, put that down, and then that's safe for any splashes. So, let's show you in action, shall we? So this is another water change video, but if I'm going to demonstrate it, I have to do one, so I'll skip through this and time lapse it or something. Essentially, stick in the drain hose. I like to do a bit of a siphon at the same time, uh, a bit of a gravel back. Not, not gravel, it's sand, but so I'll try and pick up any remnants of food or poop or any debris that's lying around while I'm doing this. But I'll go and start the siphon. And that siphon is just to that uh, drain that I showed you just outside the door. I'll just give this hose a bit of a waggle. Obviously I need to turn off the filter first, so I'm going to turn some off. Oh, that's really, and I've shown you before about me setting up Alexa with some smart plugs to control the lights, to control the sump pump and all that. Effectively I can say, Alexa, do a water change. She will switch off the sump pump. Um, I can then do the siphon and then I can ask her to turn it back on the pump outside and that will put the water back in but just to show you this in here and um, here's a list of all the devices that I've got set up and sump is obviously the sump pump pump is the pump outside and it's literally just push a button and it will do it or say Alexa turn on the whatever so I'll show you that in a second I've got a little mark 
on the aquarium on this side just to show me how far down I can go which is about here and then I've got enough water in there to fill redirectly. I've also got an auto top off on this side of the tank which will make up for any differences and you saw that extra line that I can bring in and just put fresh water straight in if I need to. I've got all these guys cowering over here for the water change. So I'll just talk about the water changes a little bit. I used to do, well, I used to say I did three water changes a week and um, I usually only actually ever did two. I'm trying to get that down to one now um, because I've got a sump full of uh, biohome media and it really keeps the lid on the nitrates brilliantly. Um, so I don't need to do water changes to get rid of the nitrates that often. There still are other trace elements that I like to do water changes for anyway. And I'm a discus guy, we just like to do water changes. Um, but I've showed you my fertilizer in previous videos as well. So this is the point that I would add in some fertilizers. Just go straight into the sump. And that's good for a week's worth in there. Uh, that's good enough for these purposes. So I'll take that hose out. And I shall be back in a second with the refill line. So this is the hose that's connected to the storage tank out there. I've just got a little T-piece on the end so as it doesn't blow the sand everywhere when I put it in. It's quite stiff but when the warm water comes through it makes it a bit more malleable. And so I've literally hung that in there. And this is where we see if Alexa is still being racist with Scottish people. Alexa, turn on the pump. And there we go. Now that is quite a lot less than the previous pump. Hmm. It's fine, it's working, it's just not quite as vigorous as the previous pump, so it might take a couple of minutes extra to refill this tank. But I can just kind of walk away and leave that to it now. If I was to forget, there's not enough water in that tank to cause any kind of flood. The sump's got plenty of headroom, it can take any excess that I put in there. Um, so let's see, I can fill and forget as long as I'm fairly sure that this is secure. I do have these clamps that I can put on. If I do need to walk away and do something else, I can stick a clamp on to make sure it won't move. But yeah, we'll just keep an eye on this. And come back in a minute. So that was it. Um, I was under the impression that this had some kind of auto shut off when it ran dry, but it doesn't. And it doesn't actually say that on the features list, so maybe I just imagined that or I bought I saw that on another product and then ordered this by accident, but that's fine, no big deal. Um, I just need to keep an eye on that. Other than that, it's working fine. As you can see, well, hopefully you can see, the water is now refilling. I've not had to touch anything. That's it. So, what do you think? Better than buckets, yeah? Um, as always, if you found any of this interesting, useful, vaguely amusing, whatever, uh, give me a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, and click that subscribe button because that always helps out. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye!